Support for KQED Live comes from Berkeley Rep. Support for KQED comes from the Asian Art Museum. Visitors can step into an experience like no other at Team Lab Continuity and become part of a wondrous ecosystem of lush natural imagery that dynamically evolves around them. For more information and ticket reservations, visit AsianArt.org. The disproportionate impact of more COVID than half of black business owners. And disproportionate. Somehow we always find a way Welcome to rise. To the blueprint builders, to the backbones of every block, for the curators of the culture, and for generations to follow. You might fall, but never fail. Keep rising. Keep rising. Keep rising. Apply for a business, marketing, and tech makeovers on us. So glad I'm flying out of Oakland today. Let's count the reasons why. For one, flying locally reduces my carbon footprint. Plus, my airport supports over 17,000 jobs in the East Bay. And it makes sense. The more I fly from OAK, the more flights airlines will add out of OAK. All good. No matter where you live in the Bay Area, there are many great reasons to pick OAK and fly the East Bay way. What you do with that extra hour is up to you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Eric Lewis. I'm a member of KQED's Community Advisory Panel. We are a group who provide support, give feedback to, and engage KQED in community building. I want to start with a land acknowledgement. KQED headquarters is located on Rymatush, Ohlone occupied lands. We want to recognize that we work and live in the greater Ohlone lands of the Bay Area. I'm delighted to welcome you to KQED live in, from the Commons here at our newly renovated headquarters in San Francisco's Mission neighborhood. KQED Live is a multi-platform live event series dedicated to bringing journalism to life on stage, amplifying local culture, and building community. We are thrilled to be presenting Victor Aguilera, a dynamic young gourmet entrepreneur whose delivery service, Arepas and Bici, launched in April 2020 in the midst of the COVID pandemic. This event is part of KQED and Español's Mi Herencia series, which fuses cooking, storytelling, and intergenerational conversation to showcase the cultural meaning and family inheritance behind distinctive dishes created by Bay Area chefs and proprietors of small local food businesses. And it's on nights like tonight that we make KQED's mission to inform, inspire, and involve tangible through dialogue with civic leaders and community members, through screenings, performances, live storytelling, and more. You can learn more about events like this and get tickets at kqe.org forward slash live. We want to thank the season sponsors that make KQED Live possible, the Asian Art Museum, Berkeley Rep, Comcast Business, and Oakland International Airport. We are so grateful for their commitment to supporting our mission of civic and cultural engagement in the Bay Area. We also want to thank food bloggers Darian Frazier at Bay Area Foods, Stephanie No at stephanie.knows.food, and Alejandra Gonzalez at Miss Foodie Bay Area for getting the word out about this show. Please follow them at their Instagram handles. And I want to thank all of you for being among the first members of the public to bring this space to life and for staying committed to the value of gathering. Now, it's my great pleasure to give the stage to KQED and Espanol reporter Carlos Cabrera Lomeli. <laughs> thank you. Hello, hello, mi gente. Buenas tardes. Hello. It is so good to see y'all for longtime Herencia fans. This is our first in-person show, so it makes me so happy to see everyone here. Uh, as, my, as, as, as was mentioned, I am Carlos Cabrello Meli, reporter and producer with KQD News and KQD in Español. Uh, I will be your host this evening, and as a reminder, this show is fully bilingual. Este programa es completamente bilingüe, so everything I say, I will be later repeating it in Spanish. Todo lo que diga ahorita, lo voy a repetir luego en español. Our guest tonight is Victor Aguilera, chef and creator of Arepas en Bici, an online takeout and delivery service. 
for arepas and Venezuelan food. Victor has been featured in places like As of Eater, As of Gate, 7x7 Magazine, KTVU, Telemundo Bay Area, and Good Morning America. Most recently, he was a contestant in the Food Network's Chopped. The mission of Arepas and Bici, to share a little piece of Victor's love for Venezuela, its culture, and its cuisine with the Bay Area during the pandemic. As a self-taught, highly skilled chef, Victor has worked to combine his two passions, cycling and cooking, to create an independent and environmentally friendly Venezuelan food delivery service. Each one of you received a box of goodies upon, the, upon entrance. Please keep them closed until we tell you to open them. I know it smells good, pero les pido que se aguanten. Y ahorita, cambio tantito en español. Como dije en inglés, soy Carlos Cabrera Lomeli, reportero y productor con el noticiero de KQD y KQD en español, también conocido como KQED. Yo seré su anfitrión esta noche y toda la presentación será bilingüe. Vamos a cambiar entre el inglés, el español y hasta el Spanglish. Entonces, por favor, siéntanse cómodos hablando en cualquier idioma que ustedes prefieran. Hoy vamos a conocer a Víctor Aguilera, dueño y creador de Arepas en Bici, un servicio virtual de entrega de comida venezolana que opera a lo largo del área de la bahía. Ya ha recibido cobertura en lugares como las revistas As of Eater, 7x7, las publicaciones de As of Gates, los noticieros de KTVU, Telemundo, Área de la Bahía y Good Morning America. Recientemente fue un concursante en el programa Chopped de la cadena Food Network. ¿Y cuál es el propósito de Arepas en Bici? Bueno, pues compartir un poco del amor que tiene Víctor por su natal Venezuela, su cultura y su comida aquí en el área de la Bahía a lo largo de la pandemia. Como un chef talentoso y entrenado por su propia cuenta, Víctor se ha enfocado en combinar sus dos pasiones. Uno, el ciclismo, y dos, la cocina. Para crear un servicio de entrega de comida venezolana independiente y ecológico. Cada uno de ustedes recibió una cajita al entrar y pues por ahora les pido que la mantengan cerrados hasta que nosotros les demos la indicación. Pero por ahora, for now, please give a round of applause for Víctor Aguilera. Over here. Yes, den un aplauso tremendo para Víctor Aguilera, que aquí viene en su bicicleta, que ahí va, on his bike, the one and only. Víctor, how you doing? ¿Cómo estás? Muy bien, gracias por tenerme. No, gracias a ti. Hola, gracias. Oh, hola, Víctor, ¿cómo ves a tu público? How do you see this crowd? Very, very proud, very honored to be here. Hermoso. <laughs> Hermosos, yeah, sí. yeah, I know. We're, we're super excited to have you here. Estamos super emocionados. Eh, pues, hace unas semanas, a few weeks ago, um, Victor, uh, uh, Victor allowed us into his workspace. And so uh, my co-producers, Joanna and Samaya, we both went to, uh, and myself, we went to uh, visit him and see how he, you know, his creative process, and he also allowed me to follow him on his bike uh, to record a bit, uh, see how I fared against, you know, the pro like him. Y bueno, hace unas semanas ahí nos invitó a su cocina y pues pudimos grabar, entender un poco cómo, cómo preparas ahí, cómo es su proceso creativo. Y hasta me, pues lo seguí en su bicicleta, él en la suya, yo en la mía. Y pues pensé que iba a poder <laughs> mantener, pero pues, was too complicated, complicado. Uh, pero, but this guy, he moves through the hills of San Francisco like a pro, and we were able to record a bit. Um, so you mind if we um, we, we uh, give the stage a bit to the video so yeah, the audience gets to see? Yeah, so, bueno, vamos a demostrar un poco un video y ahorita regresamos. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Victor Aguilera, chef and owner of Arepas and Bici. Welcome in ride my bike around San Francisco, I really feel a form uh, free. I would say bicycles saved my life. Um, it was really a hobby that really took me out of, uh, out of doing really bad things that I was doing back then. But since I moved to San Francisco, I've noticed that there wasn't really Venezuelan food and the pandemic gave me enough time because nev I never really had the financial time to just stop working and focus on my dream. So I got my business started right after the pandemic, got laid off for about a month. Sort of started feeling a little lost and started putting together an Instagram page. My fiance made a menu for me. 
and I started promoting arepas and Venezuelan food, like side dishes como tequeños y empanadas y otras cositas también. So why arepas? I've been, I've been making arepas since I was four. I'm originally from Venezuela. Uh, I was born in Valencia. I lived there till I was about 12 years old. Whenever I invited anybody over, either friends or girls over, one of the things I would cook as an introduction would be the arepa. Um, arepas is Venezuela's main dish. Para los venezolanos no se consigue mucho, muchas estas cosas aquí. So, se siente muy bien uh, dejar que la gente se sienta cerca a la casa con los productos de uno. Estoy aprendiendo a cómo ejercer mi nacionalidad y mi, uh, y mi background en, en, en unas maneras que sí se ha visto, pero en maneras, uh, pero con mi, con mi, con mi twist. Victor, siéntate por favor, pero, well, that was... Gracias. Yeah, that was a little bit of a sneak peek into, uh, you know, into Victor's, Victor's kitchen y pues, <laughs> how, you know, the, the, the cycling and we, ha uh, we had to strap a GoPro into my bike so we could follow along. Um, and we were like going down Market Street yeah. y pues, have you ever cycled down Market Street? Es una locura, it's just like people, cars, trucks jumping out of nowhere. Pero creo que lo hicimos bien, ¿no? Yeah, we even had a crazy encounter and, uh, you know, <laughs> that was fun. Uh, no, bueno, de todo, todo colorido, everything. Uh, pero, oye, Victor, how do you do it, you know, when you bike with no hands and the arepas in the back? Um, Sabes, ya estoy bien cómodo manejando mi bicicleta por San Francisco. De verdad que me siento que he dominado las calles. Yeah. Um, y toda la experiencia que he tenido durante estos 10, casi 12 años que estoy manejando bicicleta, mm -hmm. Me siento muy como en mi zona yeah. uh, cuando, estoy, cuando estoy llevando deliveries o cuando estoy solo manejando yeah. uh, uh, por, por, you know, por mi hobby. Right, right, right. Yeah. So you just get in your zone and you're off, right? Yep, yep. Exactly. Wow. And, you know, so the way you, you handle la masa, the flour, is mm -hmm. like you've been doing this forever. Uh, yeah. Who taught you how to make arepas? Uh, mi, mis abuelas. Uh, empecé a hacer arepas desde que era pequeño. Uh, como vieron en la historia, estaba haciendo arepas desde que tenía cuatro años. Y honestamente ha sido el, es, es el pan de Venezuela. Y siempre he ejercido eso hasta ahorita. Ahora, solo que ahora me salen mejor, porque antes me quedaba, me quedaba muy chunky. <laughs> no, ¿cómo así? No, but eso, that's the protein right there. <laughs> uh, so, Uh, but who was the, who, you know, who were the people that taught you? ¿Quién eran las personas que te enseñaron? O sea, padres, abuelitas, o quién era? Uh, mi abuela, mi mamá, eh, ellos fueron los primeros que no solo me enseñaron a hacer arepas, pero la, los primeros que vi haciendo la mayor parte de los platos que hago mm. hoy en día. Okay. Yeah, so your grandmothers were part of that. Sí, sí, sí. Yeah, yeah. And, And do you still, you know, talk to, you know, your grandmother about recipes? Uh, ¿Hablas con tu abuela sobre recetas, sobre cómo haces las arepas ahorita? Um, hablamos casi todos los días. Um, antes no teníamos la facilidad que teníamos antes. Ahora tenemos WhatsApp. So me da la oportunidad de, de verdad, hablar con, mm -hmm. con ella y me manda recetas de su libro que puedes ver. Ha sido tapeado en las máquinas de, de no sé las cómo se le vida, right? sí, tapping machines. The, yeah. the, the, a typewriter. Yeah. So, oh, so cool. están bien, 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 uh, bien viejas. Y con mis experiencias, les cambio, les cambio las formas de hacerla sí, um, a mi, con mi propio twist. Right. And, I mean, I can imagine, o sea, writing on a typewriter, super hard. Escribir una máquina de escribir, es, o sea, super difícil, pero... Pues si una, una abuela lo hace, if a grandmother does it, it's because it's out of love. Sí, sí, sí. Y ha tenido esas recetas hace mucho tiempo. Es un honor poder hacerlas y compartirlas con, con ustedes hoy en día. Ya. Yeah. Y bueno, cuéntame un poquito ahí de, to, de algunas de las recetas que tienes. Ahí, tell me a little bit about the recipes, you know, some of the more traditional, some of the more new ones. You don't have to go through the whole menu, but, you know, what, what, what pops to mind? You know, what are the ones that are on your mind right now? Las arepas que yo hago mm -hmm. son bien tradicionales. 
Um, sí, me gusta ejercerla de, de, depending of the season. Um, I will um, I will change it up a little bit. Like I like to do this beat masa arepa, oh. where I puree the beat, uh, the beat, and I add it to the to to the arepa, and it makes it either yellow or pink. Oh. I like to do the pink one during like Valentine's or um, during during Cancer Awareness Month, yeah, yeah. Um, and then depending on the filling, uh, um, I really try to use protein that's mm -hmm. farm fresh and really focus on what ingredients are. Yeah. Are, are on our local farmers and really try something more exciting in order to keep the menu uh, not only the same but also make it more uh, um, more exciting for each time uh, have something new and not always just right. get something old. Exactly, and adapt uh, it and adapt it you correct. Know, to San Francisco. Um, you no, know, I mean, if, if someone gave me a pink arepa on Valentine's, uh, that's the way to my heart. <laughs> so, o sea, una, una arepa rosita para Valentin. Ya saben cómo conquistarme. Uh, but, y, y bueno, ahora vayamos a, al tema ahí sobre, you, uh, you know, preparar arepa, making arepa, and you're making an arepa in San Francisco, sí. um, hundreds of miles away from Venezuela, sí. where you grew up. Do you feel that when you make an arepa, it reconnects you to those memories, to the place you left? O sea, ahí cuando haces una arepa, te ayuda a reconectar a ese lugar, esas memorias que dejaste ahorita, pues, tan lejos de Venezuela? Um, sí me trae mucha nostalgia. Uh, uh, me acuerda muchas cosas. Uh -huh. um, y tener la oportunidad de traerlas hoy en día y ejercerlas, ¿sabes? Cuando llegué a San Francisco no conseguí... Yo vengo de la... Yo me crié en... Cuando llegué a Estados Unidos, está en la Florida. Uh -huh. En la Florida hay... Más, más de una comunidad venezolana, pero cuando llegué aquí a San Francisco no tenía la misma oportunidad de, de probar mi propia comida. Um, nunca tuve el tiempo para de verdad ejercer o la, los conocimientos para empezar un negocio. Um, y cuando tuve esta oportunidad, oportunidad de hacer la comida venezolana y tener tanto support um, y que a la gente de verdad le encante, um, Uh, me, uh, so, uh, me trajo un diferente mundo. Uh -huh. Y ahora ya tenemos casi dos años haciendo arepas en bici y es, estoy esperando que el año que viene ya tengamos de verdad un lugar fijo um, porque este año ha sido muy, muy, uh -huh. muy... Uh, de transformación, everywhere, everywhere sí, right? Sí, yeah. everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Um, pero sí me quiero enfocar en lo que es uh, arepas en bici. Ya. Yeah. And I mean, hay algo que mencionaste, something you mentioned, mm -hmm. which is that here in the in the Bay Area, uh, you know, the Venezuelan community is it, it, it's it's small, but it's it's present. Está yeah. es chiquita, pero está presente. Y cada vez que conozco a una persona venezolana, eh, every time I meet a Venezuelan person, they you know it doesn't matter whether they live in Santa Rosa, Oakland, Richmond, Vallejo, they know Victor. Like <laughs> they, like ya conocen a Victor, sin importar en dónde estén. Y pues, eh, y yo creo, y pues les pregunto, y pues para ellos aprecian tanto, they appreciate so much what you do, because it's, you know, you're one of the few places where they can get, you know, something that reminds you of home. So how, how does it make you feel? ¿Cómo te sientes? That you can provide something to your community so far, and it's, you know, something they appreciate, que algo tan importante para ellos que aprecian. Um, it's, it's very, uh, I'm very proud, proud of it. Um, I feel a really, really big pride mm -hmm. inside of me. Um, I have guests that have come from Napa, um, Santa Rosa, um, Sacramento. I have friends that have flown from Florida or other states, and mm -hmm. the first thing they do is like hit me up, trying to support my, my business in any way that they can. Yeah. And not only that, but really try my food. Um, I... I feel very honored um, to really represent not only uh, my food, but Venezuela. And it feels, um, I can't wait to really just bring more to the table, not only for me, but for everybody um, to have, uh, to mm -hmm. have the access, accessibility right. to have this whenever you want it and not uh, whenever I can. Okay. Um, So that's definitely a big goal. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Ahí, de que poder dar acceso allá sí, a sí. los que lo buscan. And what about, 
you know, it's it's been you mentioned you mentioned that you came to the U.S. when you were pues, cuando eras un joven, when you were a youth. Um, but since then, what's something that you still carry with you from Venezuela? ¿Qué es algo que tú llevas contigo desde Venezuela? Una memoria, una idea, un sentimiento? Mm -hmm. um, sí, um, el espíritu trabajador y mm -hmm. mi llano, ¿sabes? Yeah. Yo me crié, um, mis padres, mi abuelo, me criaron en fincas, uh, me llevaron, me llevaban de paseos. Mm -hmm. um, de verdad que cre um, conocí mucho de mi país. Yeah. antes de dejarlo y, y nunca lo voy a dejar. Yeah. <laughs> no, and you, say, yeah. you know, that sense of like, you know, it's hard working. I yeah. mean, you got it, man. I mean, yeah, you're, yeah. you're out here, you know, working, you know, non for, you know, for how many hours it takes you to make arepas and then you just, you know, you don't hop on a car, you go on a bike <laughs> to <laughs> go on how many hills. So, tienes todo ese espíritu ahí del, del, así de amor por el trabajo vive sí. en ti. Sí, sí. Yeah. Y me encanta. Mm -hmm. No no me canso. <laughs> <laughs> um, y bueno, cuéntanos cómo fue ahí, eh, pues, se fue desarrollando tu profesión como chef. Así, ¿qué hacías antes de este proyecto de Arepas en Bici? So, what were you, you know, tell us a bit about how you, you know, the, the journey for you to become a chef. And what were you up to before Arepas en Bici? Um, ya yo tengo cocinando 14 años. Um, empecé a cocinar en, en la Florida, en un, re, en un restaurante japonés. Mm. Um, de ahí me moví en muchos, um, en, to, en, to, en todas las estaciones. De verdad que uh, aprendí todo bien rápido. Y hasta en mis días libres uh, le pedí al chef, hey, ¿puedo venir mm -hmm. a aprender a hacer sushi? Yeah. Y de repente ya me había puesto en, en el schedule para hacer sushi. So, de ahí, de verdad que empezó mi pasión con la comida. Uh, dos años después, empecé a ir a la escuela culinaria. Uh, tuve, me, uh, me gradué dos años después. Fui a un technical center solo porque yeah. quería um, un degree. Um, y el resto, de verdad que lo he aprendido en todos los trabajos. Y he agarrado mucha experiencia um, uh, durante ese tiempo. Pero si sí puedo decir algo, de la Florida, cuando me mudé aquí a San Francisco, mm -hmm. El nivel culinario mío ha crecido yeah. tanto que, hasta, que yo nunca estuve, uh, pude creer que podía haber llegado a este nivel. Uh, cuando estaba en la Florida, ya creía que sabía todo. Yeah. Y llego aquí y, y conozco tantos chefs uh, tan, uh, tan, con, con tanta experiencia um, y ap aplicaciones que me dan la, la facilidad para trabajar en otros diferentes lugares. Um, que mm. eh, crecí bastante, yeah. donde ahora puedo agarrar esa experiencia y de verdad mejorar la comida que estoy haciendo y también dejarla ser tradicional, pero con un poquito mejor. Claro. <laughs> y, so, you know, starting off in cooking in Florida, it was, you just, you, at the sushi restaurant, then you just took off and you've been, um, being in San Francisco, do you feel that, it's it's giving you challenges as a chef. I mean, and that you've been growing since then. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, when we arrived, when when me and my fiance arrived here, it was a lot of work, a lot, a lot of work. I I got the opportunity to work in a lot of places, and um, and yeah, it was just it's, yeah, it's it's, it's 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 a whole different level. Right. Um, right. And I mean the hustle and the competition and everything. And it gave me the, you know, I have this arepas and bici idea for a long time, but it really gave me the opportunity to sort of like learn and make mistakes before I could really go and reach for it. Right, right, that makes sense. And, uh, you know, what, when you were, you know, considering the project of arepas and bici, cuando estabas considerando el proyecto de arepas and bici, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, the bicycle part is a crucial element. El elemento de la bicicleta es algo crucial, es algo crítico. Yeah. Eh, ¿Por qué es tan importante la bicicleta? Why is it so important? Do you feel it gives you independence? ¿Te sientes que te da independencia? Ay, ¿por qué fue, ¿Cuál fue tu, tu, tu proceso para llegar a eso? Um, Sabes, yo había un... Creo que fue en 2018 donde un día estaba trabajando por Pinterest and the Academy of Art University. 
Y me cansé, estaba cansado de trabajar por, la, por una compañía y no ganar suficiente. Entonces so, llegué a mi casa como a las 8 de la noche, preparé 25 arepas y las vendí el, la, la misma noche en una hora en diferentes barras. Y llegué a la casa de regreso y le digo, le digo a Stacy, that's, that's my fiance's name, ok. Vamos a vender arepas, ya, 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 sé, ya es lo que quiero hacer. Y, ¿sabes? Um, en, esas, en esas ventas agarré la oportunidad de, de ser executive, executive chef for, uh, para, for a Mexican restaurant. Yeah. Cuando me dieron la oportunidad, yo dije, bueno, ahora puedo hacer errores con el dinero de otro. <laughs> you can, uh, I can make mistakes now with somebody else's money and focus on uh, and, and, and really learn how to like run a business. So ever since then, I had to put a pause on Arepas and BC. Why I involve the BC part, the, the cycling part on it? Um, not only were, was I trying to go for something very eco-friendly, but something that was very easy to move around the city. You try to drive around the city, you either have to worry about parking or moving your car, getting towed, getting your car broken into. There's so many things that can happen to your car. With my bike, I can just put it on my bike, no matter how many floors, if I have to go up, upstairs or, or down right. or any hill, you know, there's always the downhill right, exactly. right after, so it's always that fun part. Um, and the beginning was very challenging but I was very happy because I was, uh, I was able to join two of my passions together. You know, I've been riding bikes for, um, since I was a kid, obviously, but prof I'd like to say professionally for maybe eight years, I play on this sport called bike polo. It's like hockey on bicycles. Um, got to play on the world championship in 2013. Uh, I race for Red Bull. I've done a couple of Red Bull Belgium races. I've done the Red Bull Bay Climb. And I've done a, we like, we, they're called alley cat races, which is they're more like street base. And we do a lot of, um, um, a lot of them are for really good causes, but they're, but they're, uh, they're on a whole different level. Um, and from, and from that, um, it was, it, it kind of like, it kind of made sense. Yeah. Um, right. No, and then you can eat all the arepas you wanted. Correct. Puedes comer todas las arepas que quieres. Y los pequeños. Y los pequeños, <laughs> claro. All the pequeños you wanted. Bueno, okay. All right, Victor. Mira, and now we're going to do a little, we're going to make sure the audience was listening. Vamos a asegurarnos que la audiencia estaba poniendo atención. So, a little bit of a pop quiz. Una, hay una prueba sorpresa. Vamos a ver. So, there are yes or no answers. So, raise your hand if your answer is yes to the questions. All right? So, they're going to be pretty chill. Victor, me, me va a estar ayudando, yeah. uh, making sure that the answers are correct, y pues explaining, you know, why the answer is right, explicando por qué la respuesta está correcta. Correcto. And, all right, so first one. Uh, <clears throat> so, before attending this event, antes de venir a este evento, did you, know what an, did you know what an arepa was? ¿Sabían que era una arepa? Raise your hand if you use yes. Okay, perfect, that's, perfect. That's good. Yeah, no, no, no. That's really I mean, good. I, but I feel, you know, okay, I'm, that it's the more people know what an arepa is, is better, right? Correct. Right? Do you has that it, been? No. But. Well, it's it's my it's my goal to really share what an arepa is because not only it's really healthy for you and it's it's a gluten free option, but it's so simple to make at home that it will be such a simple option for to teach kids to make. If I could do it when I was four, other kids could do it too and really um, uh, introduce um, mm -hmm. um, sort of like a new item here. And yeah. it's, it's, it, it can pretty, pretty much be a sandwich. Exactly. <laughs> no, and make it a staple of, you know, a Bay Area cuisine like we've seen with other, you know, plates as well. But please don't call it a sandwich. It's an arepa. <laughs> Cuidado. <laughs> All right. So now we get into the mechanics of an arepa. Okay. So... Do you fry the dough after you shape it? F es que ahí frías la masa después de ponerla en su formita. Okay, so yes. Do you fry the dough after you shape it? Raise your hand. If not, keep it down. Si alzan la mano, si creen que hay que 
freír la masa antes, digo, después de ahí moldearla. Ok, ok, all right. Víctor, ¿cuál es la respuesta? What's the answer? Uh, la, la forma correcta es hacer la bolita primero, armarla y después se cocina. Ok, y, so mold it first. Uh -huh. Y un consejo cuando hagan la harina, el agua va primero. The water goes first whenever you make the masa. Right, and now let's go into the masa itself. So, you, um, raise your hand, all right, is the if you think the answer is yes. Is the main ingredient of the masa, of the dough, wheat flour? Okay, un momentito, we'll give people a couple minutes to see if they change their mind. All right, so, Victor, ¿cuál es la respuesta? What's the answer? Corn masa, uh, maíz blanco y precocinado. Uh, la más popular es la harina pan y no, yo sé que no se consigue en todos lados. Sí se puede usar masa de, para, hacer, uh, para hacer tacos, mm. pero no vas a sentir el mismo sabor. Mm. Um, sí recomiendo uh, el, el maíz blanco precocinado para hacer arepas. No wheat flour. Okay. Um, y no cornmeal. A lot of, uh, a lot of people use cornmeal. It is not cornmeal. If you ever do get the cornmeal, um, you can grind the cornmeal to a potter, mix it with a little regular AP flour, and you'll get sort of the same dough consistency, but it won't taste the same. Mm -hmm. you, you know, and if folks, you know, want to find, um, you, you know, are looking for a, a masa pan, you know, flour, uh, with, uh, brand pan. It's a, sometimes it's a little hard. So you know, how have you been doing it to find all the ingredients you need? ¿Cómo le haces para encontrar todos los ingredientes que necesitas? Como 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 dije en uh, temprano, me gusta mucho ir al mercado y tratar de conseguir mis propios ingredientes. Con la harina pan sí se hace un poco difícil conseguirla aquí en San Francisco. It's really hard to find masa here in San Francisco. Um, and there's not a lot of a lot of stores that will carry it and when they do they do run out pretty quickly so for a long time i started ordering uh online um the shipping was crazy because of the weight um, and then i started finding companies like in san jose mm -hmm. so we will go drive down to san jose and pick it up down there um now i've sort of like built a really good relationship with a supermarket down here and i totally recommend it called, called uh guadalupe um, yeah. La Casa de Guadalupe, they're right on Mission Street on 25th. And all their Spanish uh, goods are, you know, yeah, yeah. something that you want to find all the time. Right, no, I go to buy tortillas, so that's where I go buy tortillas oh, myself. Oh, so, so, you know, so you know what I'm talking about. A ver si nos topamos un día, we bump into each other. All right, so now last question is, were you impressed by Victor's cycling skills? ¿Te, impre fuiste impres te impresionaste por las habilidades <laughs> en la bicicleta de Victor? Thank claro. you. No, no, I was impressed too. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> pero pues, Victor, ¿cómo le haces? I mean, you, you were just like, psh, 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 you know, like, how, ni te asustan las colinas de San Francisco. No, and, you know, I don't ride a regular bike. I ride a fixed gear. It has no brakes. Um, and, <laughs> and I'm clipped in. Um, for those who don't know what a fixed gear is, it's a bicycle that has a, um, the, you know how usually you ride a bike and you can just sort of like stop pedaling and continue to ride? With this one, you have to always pedal. And if you stop pedaling, your pedals will launch you off the bike. Um, once you get used to it and build like sort of a muscle, like you, you're able to stop it with your own, with your own strength but you don't really have a complete break. You sort of like skid. I feel very comfortable. It took a long time to get used to this type of bike, but yeah. um, it just makes, I feel more comfortable with that type of bike than with a regular freewheel. Um, and then when it came to hills, it was ma mainly finding the right gear ratio where I could still get where I needed to go and work work as hard as I could to really build the strength to get around San Francisco. When I first arrived, uh, my first week, my feet were purple. Um, I remember um, my first day in San Francisco, I went, got a job. The second day, I started heading to it and I had to head down Russian Hill. Oh. In Russian Hill, 
my chain broke and I was just going ah, nonstop. Like I was just, uh, lucky for me, I had a green, I had all the green lights. So I just took the, <laughs> I just took the, I just took the momentum and tried to get as close as I could to my job. That the right, same, right, right. It, the same day I was able to get off early enough to sort of like fix my bike. But a month later, my bike broke again because it wasn't ready for San Francisco Hills. Uh -huh. um, it really took a whole process to get used to to these hills. But now it's a, uh, I like to say a piece of cake. Right. But some hills are still <laughs> are still a challenge. Right. Como pez en el agua. <laughs> All right. So um, I think that I. Yo diría que la audiencia se puso, did a good job. You, I, I'd say the audience did a good job, right, Victor? Yeah, yeah. yeah All yeah, right, yeah. no, please, a round of applause for nuestra audiencia. <laughs> so, now let's turn a bit to, you know, the, the, the beautiful things that we have in front of us. Ahí las cajitas, the, the boxes. <laughs> okay, don't open them yet, don't open them yet, don't open them yet. This is, I want to build a suspense. Vamos a armar el suspenso. Okay, Victor, want to tell us a bit about what you prepared for us tonight? Yes, of course. Um, today in front of you, you have something very special. Um, this is one of those dishes that really, really make me feel close to home. And it's a traditional dish in Venezuela. It's called anayaca. And when you look at it, it's going to look like a tamal in a plantain leaf. But it's not a tamal. It's uh, fully loaded uh, for the ones that got the traditional one. It's filled with uh, chicken, beef, and pork. And it's got European uh, backgrounds as well as African and, and South American uh, really mixed in together. So you'll find a bunch of savory and sweet uh, sweetness to it. Um, for, for other guests, I've, cr I've created a vegan option and it will taste just like it. Um, I really hope you enjoy this dish. Yes, eso, but not yet, not yet. Esperense tantito. <laughs> um, so, and, and I think that's, so, uh, that's spot on what you mentioned, that it's, in a way, it's a reflection of the history of, 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 of the cuisine. Es una historia de la cocina de Latinoamérica, de Venezuela, of Latin America and Venezuela, because you see three uh, cultures come together in one dish. Ves a tres culturas unirse en un solo platillo. Eh, ves ahí a, la, pues a las culturas indígenas representadas por el maíz. You see, you know, maíz, which, you know, indigenous to the Americas and harvested and protected by the native people of the continent. You see beef and pork, animals brought in by European sellers. Ves ahí a las carnes de puerco y res que fueron traídos por los colonizadores europeos. And then spices brought in by the enslaved African people. Ves ahí las especies que... Eh, compartidas ahí por, la, eh, por las personas que ahí, por las personas africanas que ahí fueron esclavizadas ahí y todo en un platillo all brought together in one plate and we also see you know we also see similar combinations across Latin America vemos combinaciones similares a lo largo de Latinoamérica pero las ayacas tienen un contexto muy específico ayacas have a very specific context right Victor they're sí. served in a very you know during one time I mean a specific time of the year I mean, yeah I usualmente en navidades en año nuevo para la, todo el mes de diciembre uh, recientemente uh, uh, perdónenme Recientemente, we've had the opportunity to really expand all over the world and acquire more um, uh, mm -hmm. reasons to um, celebrate, um, you know, early, and the traditions are starting to sort of split through the year. Yeah, um, it is nice to have uh, pan de jamón and and ajacas for. Uh, Thanksgiving and, yeah, yeah. and even for Independence Day in Venezuela to sort of like bring, uh, which is like uh, in, during, during June. Yeah, yeah. So it just feels, you know, it's uh, it can be done anywhere, but it really feels more of like a holiday food. Right. And, and, and tell us a bit, how is, um, you know, besides an ayaca, you mentioned a little bit pan de jamón. Mm -hmm. um, also, you know, what's, um, what's the holidays usually like in Venezuela? ¿Cómo es la época navideña de las fiestas de sembrinas en Venezuela? <laughs> la gaita, I'm sure you can't forget la gaita, you know, sí. gaita the music. Sí, de verdad que extraño la, el, espíritu, el espíritu navideño en Venezuela. Uh, cuando yo me fui a Venezuela, las cosas estaban muy, muy bien. Mm -hmm. um, so, de lo que yo me acuerdo, 
uh, uh, me acuerdo mu mu muchas navidades con muchas luces, muchos uh, fireworks, a raspa raspa. We, uh, we have like the craziest names for fireworks. Uh, for those that speak Spanish, um, we have one that's called Tumba Rancho, Mata Suegra. <laughs> um, so really, really, really uh, crazy, um, crazy uh, Christmas ho uh, right. over there. Um, and the best part is uh, the food. Um, um, we have the ayacas, the pan de jamón, pernil, asado negro, which I'm gonna start doing pretty soon. Um, and it's uh, and then you wake up the next day and still have some leftover, and then you grab the leftover and make arepas and fill them up with. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Pero cuidado con la suegra. I'm careful with the. With... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 vaya no. Okay. Yeah. And and so now, I mean, do you? You know, now that you know we're in this, it's the first day of December. Um, looking ahead for the month, do you have, do you have in mind any, you know, how you want to celebrate, you know, what some of those traditions in your home? Yeah. ¿Cómo vas a celebrar en tu casa ya que estamos llegando a diciembre? Um, sí. No voy a celebrar en la casa. Voy a trabajar. <laughs> este, pero sí quiero hacer unos platos especiales este año. Um, el año pasado introduje. Uh, las ayacas y pan de jamón a San Francisco. Uh, SF Eater hizo un una article sobre eso. Um, tenía una amiga que estaba haciendo ponche y también estábamos haciendo um, marquesas, que es un uh -huh. postre venezolano. Um, de, este año voy a hacer asado negro, voy a hacer el pernil. Uh, quiero hacer un plato navideño con, con ayacas, pernil uh. y ensalada de gallina que, que trae papas. So I'm trying to do uh, a holiday plates that have a, a pernil, which is a braised pork, um, asado negro, which is a, a black uh, roast um, that has sort of the similar flavors of the ayaca, but sweeter. Um, so so good, and it's got, and, it come, and with a side of um, ensalada de gallina, which is a chicken and potato salad, um, with an ayaca on the side. So I'm trying to. Uh, that's my goal to do for this uh, for for these holidays, along pan de jamón and, and ayacas, and also uh, uh, have uh, have vegan options. Um, I'm gonna be. Uh, voy a hacer una ayaca. Diferente a la que tienen hoy, va a tener un filling con jackfruit, uh, with the same, uh, with a smoked jackfruit, with the same uh, back, uh, background flavor. So it's going to have that sweetness from the jackfruit and the savory from the guiso. Victor, ya me estás haciendo agua la boca. I don't know how to translate it in English, but I mean, making me savor already. I mean, you're invited, you're invited for Christmas at my house anytime, man. <laughs> So, all right, now, now we got to the good stuff. We've earned it, yeah, ya, 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 ya llegamos a lo bueno. Okay, so, listo, okay, so before, as we open these, the box, I wanna, um, you know, I'm gonna read a couple of instructions. So, open them carefully. We will try to use all our senses on this. Ay, con cuidado, abran las cajas. Vamos a usar todos nuestros sentidos. Todo, ay, entonces, primero, eh, ay, esta es una conversación, entonces, por favor, si, si se sienten inclinados a compartir, ahí por favor, eh, mi compañera Semaye va a estar caminando ahorita con el micrófono. My, uh, my co-producer Semaye will be walking around with a microphone. So if you feel inclined to share your comments, you know, your thoughts, questions, please just, you know, look at her, raise your hand, and she'll walk over with the microphone. Okay, so take a deep breath. Before you start, just take a deep breath. Yes. And I smell it all the way here. Hasta lo, lo puedo leer desde acá. And say out loud the first ingredient you smell. La primer ingrediente que puedes oler. A ver, escuchemos. Okay. Okay. I mean, while the microphone is getting ready, I mean, we, I mean, if anyone feels like they are, they have it, and wants to, you know. Yes, that's, that's in line right there. She has the mic. So if you think you got it, just, you know, motion to her. You raise your hand, look at her, and she can walk over to where you are. Si ya saben ahí cuál es el ingrediente, ahí al oler, alcen sus manos, o vean, ya tenemos a alguien. We have somebody over here. Masa. <laughs> <laughs> ¿Tú qué crees, Victor? What do you say? 
Um, el, usualmente el primer olor que siento cuando abro una yaca es um, el, el, el steam de la hoja de plátano. Um, right, the steam yeah. of the banana leaf. Yeah. Oof, yes. Okay. Now, using your fork, usando sus tenedores, sus cubiertos, take a small bite of the ayaca. Tomen una pequeña mordida de la ayaca. Y a ver, ¿cuál es la primera cosa? What is the first thing you can taste? La so, primera cosa que... So I left the ayaca with the uh, plantain leaf because I really wanted you to get that experience of unwrapping, sort of like a gift. And that's what you do. Usually it comes tied up as well, but I cut that already for you. Um, and it's just you're usually in for a surprise. Yeah, no, and they're the lucky ones. They got the ayacas. We did it. <laughs> a nosotros nos tocaron las ayacas. A ustedes, sí. It's all right. Yeah. Espero que te hayan guardado una. Después, después. So, si no, <laughs> ya sé dónde vives. Ya, ay, me aparezca. <laughs> all right. So, does anyone want to taste, you know, I mean, share what they can taste? ¿Quieren compartir lo que pueden probar ahorita? Algo que le resalte, something that pops, you, you know, jumps out at you. We have somebody up at the front. Uh, hola, eh, Víctor, felicitaciones por, por tu propuesta. Yo soy Carlos, soy de Perú. Y se, me, hace, me hizo recordar al tamal peruano, con la gran diferencia que tiene un toque dulce. Y, y que el sabor no es tan invasivo en la, en la boca, ¿no? Es fresco, o sea, tienes ganas de comer de nuevo y comer de nuevo y comer de nuevo. Y comer de nuevo. ¿Hay otro o no? Eso me alegra mucho porque mi, mi fianza es peruana. Uh, qué alegría que te haya gustado. Sí. Um, so, just a quick translation. It's there. Um, I'd like to hear the difference on, yeah. the, on, on the one, because we did mention that we have the similarities through... Yeah. Uh, South America and Central exactly. America. Exactly, through that legacy, yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, what Carlos, to my tocayo, shared just now is that it reminds him a bit of the of a Peruvian tamale, but with a freshness that invites him to keep eating and taking more bites. Um, anyone want to share any more? Uh, or before we go to the next question, you know what? Oh, we have somebody in the back. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Carlos. I just got an olive, and it was really good. Oh, some olive, olivos. Yes. Can tell everybody's into it. Yeah, todos están calladitos. Everyone is quiet because they like it. <laughs> okay. Savor each bite. O sea, aprovecho. <laughs> and those are usually, uh, you know, family sort of yeah. uh, thing to do. This one said I had to do by myself this time, and oh my God, um, sort of like miss that feeling. Yeah, no, okay, the process, yeah, because you just don't eat it with your family, you make it with your family as yeah, well. Correct, yeah, the correct. whole, o sea, sin importar la edad, o el género, o lo que sea, it's just regardless of age or gender, the whole family comes together into the yeah. kitchen. Yeah. Did anyone I, make ayacas growing up? Ahí alguien, ahí se crió comiendo ayacas, ahí, eso sí, atrás. Did, um, what, did, does this remind you of those memories? I no sé si quieran compartir. Victor, ¿cómo estás? Un gusto. Um, bueno, un gusto saludarte. ¿Cómo estás? Yeah. Eh, de nuevo te felicito por tu iniciativa. He estado siguiéndote hace mucho tiempo y ya tú conoces la trayectoria que tenemos. Sí, me trajo muchos recuerdos de la comida de mi mamá. De hecho, tiene este sabor, sí les digo que si pueden guardar un poco, lo calientan, porque caliente siempre va a ser mucho mejor, mm. pero el sabor está allí y puedo reconocerlo y de verdad que me encantan y los voy a, vamos a estar esperando el asado negro seguro. <risa> Eso sí. Gracias. Ya. Yeah. No, te, gracias. Thank you for sharing that. A ver, ya, yeah, yo creo que hay que dejarles un poquitito, pero... Hola, Víctor. Mi nombre es Uriel. Uh, yo soy uh, uh, mexicano tradicionalmente uh, y hemos probado tamales de todo tipo, de dulces, de rajas, de puerco, de todo, ¿verdad? Y uh -huh. esto para mí es algo simplemente nuevo y está, la verdad, que buenísimo. Gracias. Al 100%. 100%. So, 
Espero un día visitar tu restaurante. Muchas gracias. <laughs> This is very exciting. <laughs> nice. Oh, oh, so I, I think. Oh, somebody right behind. Um, yes, right behind you, I think. Right over there? Yes. <laughs> Hi, Victor. This is delicious. Thank you. Um, and yeah, I like it very much. But I did not choose the vegan one. What is inside the vegan option? Mm. The vegan one has mushrooms. Um, it's got three different types of mushrooms. Um, and it's also got the same type of way that I cook the traditional one. Um, with, um, um, I can't tell you all the secrets. <laughs> but but it, it, it does have pretty much the same, the same process. All, all I switch is just not trying the protein. I do cook the sauce for a lot longer, so it creates that consistency because I don't add any cornstarch or any, um, you know, I think they use like now it's time to to like thicken everything. Um, so it's really just a time process where uh, um, you get all those flavors. I just wanted to say I really like the combination of the savory and the sweet mm. uh, tastes and flavors. And so how do you make this? I mean, not you don't have to give away all the details, <laughs> but just generally. So, so which one do you have, the vegan or the, the, the meat one? So the meat one, I have to cut all the meat, the chicken, the pork, and the meat, very, very small dice. Um, and usually they're like large quantities. Then I have to um, cut the vegetables. I like to use leeks and onions uh, and, and a miracle. And from there, um, I sweat all my vegetables. I cook all the vegetables um, um, into, I get the guiso. Um, one of the ingredients that are listed is pamela. That's where you get the sweetness. Pamela is a block of uh, um, concentrated brown sugar cane and I just grind it into it becomes a um, into a potter. Um, and then that gets cooked. After it gets cooked, then I assem assemble my my line. My line comes into the guiso, uh, raw onions, raw red peppers. Those are for garnish. I'm, I'm sure you like has one at least. Everybody has like at least one to two strips in there. Um, a little shredded chicken on the side that's not cooked with the rest, that's on the, as well as, well as the garnish. Uh, olives and raisins. I do like to cook uh, mine with the raisins in it, but I also add a couple more every time I wrap it. Then I have to burn the plantain leaves um, to make sure that they're getting nice and soft. Mm -hmm. um, create the masa, create the oil for the masa, make the masa. Um, after that's made, uh, I have to, um, start assembling the ayaka, which is uh, pretty much uh, uh, flattening the masa, filling it up, wrapping it in the plantain leaf, and then after they're all wrapped, tying them up, up with a uh, with a um, um, and string, no? You yeah, with a string um, and uh, a butcher's twine mm -hmm. uh, is what I use. And after that, uh, the process for them, I, if you can freeze them and keep them for up to three months. And if you um, back, uh, you know, keep them in a simple bag, they'll last even longer. Um, and then you can just boil it and, as, and you boil it for about an hour and you pretty much get your ayaka. So it's a pretty long process. It's, uh, I think it took me like maybe about 18 hours to do the whole thing. And I made about, I think I made about a, almost, almost 88 this time. Wow. And last year we were making about 200 to 300 a week. Oof. Oh my. And, 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 huh? What is giso? Uh, giso is the, the, broth? the, pretty much the, uh, the filling, uh, oh. the, the, the chicken, meat, the, the whole cook, yeah. Yeah, wow. And that's on top of like the hours, like, you know, for biking and, you know, distribution, everything else. Yeah, that's not, that's not counting, going to pick up uh, everything. It's, you know, it's tricky finding the plantain leaves, yeah. uh, 
finding the masa and and then the ingredients. The, the rest is not so hard, but I do have difficulties finding the olives that I like to find. Right, right, right. Whoa, wow. And also, I you know want to open up the space too if you have questions uh, you want to ask Victor about in general. Um, you know the arepas in bici, the project. O sea. Um, quiero también abrir, o sea, si tienes preguntas uh, para Víctor sobre su proyecto, su trabajo, esta es un, ahí la oportunidad para hacerlo. Uh, hola, Víctor, mi nombre es Cristina, um, soy mexicana y uh, te quería dar las gracias porque es mi primera vez comer comida venezolana, uh -huh. uh, entonces muchas gracias. Um, y te quería preguntar, uh, como mexicana yo he hecho muchos tamales y siempre he probado tamales mexicanos y la masa, aunque también es de maíz, sabe tan diferente y tiene como, the texture es tan diferente. Yeah. Entonces te quería preguntar si sabes por qué son tan diferentes o um, cuál es la diferencia en el proceso de hacer los tamales mm. o las ayacas. El tipo de harina. Um, es, es diferente. Um, también um, hay muchas personas que le agregan fat, un tipo de fat a la masa. Yo al mío, yo para las hallacas, yo no le creo, yo no uso ningún tipo de gordura pa, um, para evitar, uh, para dar la oportunidad a la gente que no come certain things uh, poder comerla. Este... Yo creo, yo hago mi propio aceite que le da el color a la masa y eso le da un, un um, it keeps it like a little moist. Um, pero hay muchas formas de darle a la masa esa suavidad. Um, yo creo que si puedes, si empiezas a tratar diferentes harinas, tal vez puedas conseguir un resultado mejor. Oh, and then, oh, I think two questions up front. Uh. I think I saw this hand first, and then Carlos, you can pass to you. Victor, what's your next step? So for my next step right now, it's a little bit of trying to find uh, a new place to, yeah. to live. And we're trying to figure out if we're going to stay. Um, the goal is to stay here in the city and and find something uh, big enough where I can share the space. Mm. Um, I really want to keep doing arepas en bici. My whole goal is to really open a brick and mortar. Um, it's been two years trying to do that. And these past two years, I've learned yeah. sort of enough to really know where I want it to be. Um, and that's gonna be my next step. Dan and I really like to compete against Beat Bobby Flay. <laughs> eh, Victor, tenía una pregunta para ti. Eh, un chef, un artista, tiene o sea, la parte creativa de un lado, ¿no? Mm. Y luego viene la realidad, que es el negocio, o sea, poner las cosas ya en papel o en aterrizarlas, ¿no? Sí. ¿Cómo, cómo llegaste a, o sea, cómo, de quién aprendiste? O, o cómo hiciste o qué tuviste qué retos tuviste que enfrentar para poner las dos cosas juntas mm. fue bien complicado como primero como chef es tú tú no tienes la oportunidad de aprender mucho lo que es la parte de customer service o la parte de negocios um, bastante lo tuve que aprender por el internet muchos consejos también de mi pareja um, y de verdad Tratando de organizar los dos, ha sido un challenge bien grande, um, pero no es imposible. Si solo es muy, mucho trabajo. Pero cuando toca combinar los dos, um, te da la oportunidad de de verdad tener control de lo que estás haciendo y saber qué está entrando, saliendo, qué hay que cambiar. Um, todavía me gustaría aprender más lo que es negocios um, para de verdad crear cuando ejerza mi brick and mortar no hacer ningún tipo de error. Mm. Wow. Víctor, este, viendo tu, tu business, me doy cuenta que es un poco limitado el hecho de que tú cocinas y además eres el delivery también, ¿no? Eh, ¿Cómo consideras crecer en ese sentido? O sea, ¿En algún punto te vas a dedicar solo a, la, a, la, a hacer arepas y que otros salgan a, a distribuir la arepa o, 
o cómo, cómo ves el crecimiento y la expansión de Arepas en Bici. Segunda pregunta, ¿cuándo te vemos más veces en el, West Co en el, en el, en el lado de Oakland o West East Bay? Um, buena pregunta. Cuando, cuando ya tenga negocio, y sí lo voy a tener, mi, mi goal es, con los empleados, es todavía tener la facilidad de, de bicicletas. A I mí mean, no vamos a poder crear, uh, tratar áreas de 5 o 10 millas, pero aunque sea, vamos a tener un límite de 1 a 3. Y si crecemos más, uh, tal vez ejercemos más lugares. Pero siempre voy a tratar de tener los deliveries vía bici. Y no solo eso, pero Um, yo sé que va a costar dejar la bicicleta. Yo no puedo estar en la bicicleta todo el tiempo. Ya me ha costado mucho en estos sí. tiempos poder uh, hacer, uh, hacerlo todo. Uh, sí voy a necesitar un equipo, no solo en la bicicleta, but, pero en la cocina también. I'm not only going to need a team of, of you know, cycling, but I'm also going to need a team in the kitchen. And it's going to be an honor being able to teach everything that I've known and have others uh, create that and, and really yeah. like, yeah. Um, and not only become a business owner, but a teacher. Um, see, one thing that I like to, one of my biggest goals right now, once the business is started, is to create, uh, is to follow my, <clears throat> sorry, let me drink some water, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah, adelante. I also just want to mention that I think we have time for maybe one more question and then we're going to wrap, but sorry, Victor. Um, so I just want to follow my uh, father-in-law's legacy and being able to, once we have the kitchen, teach uh, teens that are um, mentally able, um, um, like autism, Mm -hmm. um, to teach them skills uh, in the job in the kitchen, mm -hmm. so once they grow as an adult, they have the opportunity to work for different um, for different companies as well. Um, that's uh, I think that's that's really like one of my biggest things that I would like to follow uh, once it comes through. I think uh, I, I think everybody deserves a chance. Wow, that's beautiful. Um, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. No, really looking Hola, forward to that. Eh, mi nombre es Geraldine, soy venezolana, estoy muy orgullosa de lo que probé, me trae sabor a Navidad, a Venezuela. Estoy sinceramente muy orgullosa de tu trabajo porque no es fácil y ya después de tanto tiempo de haber salido de Venezuela, traer este sabor a pesar de que ya tienes tanto tiempo aquí es, es como, como sentir volver allá y estar aquí. Gracias por tu trabajo y no te detengas. Gracias. That, that's, that's pretty much what I, why I keep doing this. Right. <laughs> wow. How do we get you over um, uh, Right now, I'm doing a pop-ups every Wednesday at Maze. Uh, Maze is a bar right on Polk in between Sutter and Bush. And I'm there 6 p.m. into 12 at night, sometimes 1 a.m. Um, also, if you, follow, if you don't follow me on Instagram, I always say follow me on Instagram because I post different dates uh, when I can do service. Sometimes I do service at home or if another bar gives me an opportunity, then I do pop-ups. I try to stay as busy as I can. Uh, lately, since this year, um, this year I was, uh, uh, I won Shop 420, which was infused with uh, cannabis. So it gave me the opportunity to, like, it opened a whole new door of opportunities yeah. for me. And it's, keep, it's been keeping me sort of traveling and doing private dinners for a lot of customers. So I haven't been able to do Arepas and Bici from home as much. So I mainly has been focused on the pop-up and hope and setting up dates. Uh, right now I'm setting up dates for my holiday menu. Uh, so everybody gets a chance to uh, get Venezuelan food during the holidays. Wow, pues, no, hay que, pues hay que agendar eso, hay que programar eso. So yeah, it's, yeah. yeah, make some time for that because it's gonna be good. <laughs> Y bueno, I want to first thank the audience. Quiero agradecerles a ustedes por ahí su paciencia, sus preguntas, your thoughtfulness, your questions. Thank you. And I mean, just round of applause for y'all, please, para la audiencia. 
And I think that, you know, we're, um, we're about to wrap up. So, but before I just wanna, uh, I just wanna thank the, uh, the crew up in the booth, the KQD Live Events team, my co-producers, Joanne, Semaye, and our sponsors and food bloggers as well for bringing us all together for today's event. Y para terminar, le agradezco a nuestro equipo técnico, el equipo de eventos en vivo de KQED, mis colaboradoras, Joan y Semaye, y además a nuestros patrocinadores y los bloggers de comida que nos apoyaron a realizar este evento. Y a ustedes, como les dije, nuestra audiencia por el, car por el cariño y la conversación muy interesante que nos dieron hoy. Thank you all, our audience, and yes, our audience at home, nuestra audiencia en casa, because this is also a live stream event. Este evento se está dando en vivo a través del internet, entonces los que están en viendo en casa también les agradezco de todo corazón. And so please, I hope that we're able to, you know, those of us physically present here, go home tonight con algo uh, calientito en, la, en el estómago, that we can go home with something warm and yummy in our bellies. Y pues, y también a Victor, te agradezco mucho ahí. I thank you so much for just sharing, you know, not just your, your, your cuisine, tu cocina con nosotros, pero también tu vida, tu perspectiva y tu futuro. Your life, your perspective, and your future. No, Gracias, good. Victor. Un aplauso por Victor, por favor. Yeah. No, gracias a ti, No, no, pues, o sea, vale la pena. All right. Bueno, so, all right. Um, I, I think that we can, you know, if you'd like, um, ¿todavía hay ayacas allá afuera? Or there's still ayacas? Yo cuando vi, había unas. Espero que sí. All right, there's still some ayacas outside if y'all want to. Um, <laughs> if you want to save me one, <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> Thank you so much again. Please, um, the whole roster of uh, future KQD events is available at kqd.org slash live. And you can also follow uh, KQD in Espanol on Instagram to find out more of KQD in Espanol's programming. That's KQD in Espanol and on Instagram, yeah. Arepas, Arepas en, en Bici y Chef Aguilera. All right. Ya saben dónde está. You know where he is. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night.